The highest frequency has the shortest wavelength. In the ISM band, we are considering the highest frequency is 928 MHz. If we want at least 10 grid cells per wavelength at 928 MHz, we need to first calculate the wavelength in air at that frequency. The wavelength in air is C, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, over 928 megahertz, and we get about, we'll say about 32 centimeters. So to get 10 grid cells per wavelength, the highest number we could set dx equal to is, so it can be equal to or less than, 3.2 centimeters. But we're not just modeling air, right? Our model will include snow and the ground and sometimes a human body. And the wavelength of an electromagnetic wave shrinks in different materials. So we need to consider the electromagnetic wavelength in all of the materials in our model. And we need to make sure we have at least 10 grid, 10 grid cells per wavelength in all of these materials. Either by performing measurements or through a literature search, we can find out the material parameters, and specifically the conductivity, sigma, and the permittivity, epsilon, of the snow, ground, and the human body over our frequency range of interest. All of the materials that we're modeling are non-magnetic, so mu, the permeability, is just going to be equal to mu naught, the same permeability as in free space. Here is a table that I found in the published literature that provides the conductivity, so this is sigma, and the relative permittivity, epsilon r, for snow, ice, muscle, and uh, sample ground at nine, about 900 megahertz. Snow is basically a mixture of ice and air. So the dielectric constant of snow is in between the dielectric constant, the relative permittivity here, of air and ice. So snow, epsilon r, is about 1.6, it turns out. And the conductivity of snow, th these values, you can see the conductivity of snow is probably going to be very, uh, basically zero. Next, the human body is comprised of a lot of different materials, muscle, bone, and so forth. So one question is, do we need to model all of those details of what all the different materials inside the body and the geometry of those materials? Well, it would be nice to start simple, especially since we only have a one-dimensional model right now. So let's model the body as being homogeneous. Sometimes assuming the body is homogeneous is a good enough approximation, and sometimes it's not. In our case, since we only want to detect the presence of a person, rather than any internal features of the body. And since the conductivity and permittivity of a human body is so different from the surrounding air, snow, and ground, it turns out to be a decent approximation to assume the body is homogeneous. So the body, we're going to say, is homogeneous. Muscle tissue is the most representative tissue for a human body at about 900 megahertz. So, so we can set the homogeneous body tissue to, elect, to the electrical parameters of muscle. So that's why in this table you can see a row for muscle. Now the ground in different regions of the world can have very different electrical characteristics depending on its composition and moisture content. So let's start with these values in the last row of this call, um, table. And this is for sandy soil. The radar system could always be tested on other ground parameters. To make sure we have at least 10 grid cells per wavelength over the entire spectrum of our source, and in all of the materials we will be modeling, we need to consider the highest frequency of the source, since it'll have the shortest wavelength, and the material in which the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave shrinks the most then we can make sure we have at least 10 grid cells per wavelength in that material and at the highest frequency. Aside from listing the conductivity and the permittivity, this table includes the electrical wavelength at about 928 MHz, which of course is the highest frequency we're interested in. And we include the wavelength for all the materials we're going to be modeling.
you can see in the last column here that the wavelength is the shortest in the muscle tissue that we'll be using for the human body. So let's calculate what our grid resolution needs to be in order to have at least 10 cells per wavelength in muscle tissue. So taking the wavelength of the muscle and 0.043, and this is in units of meters, and dividing by 10, this is going to be dx, needs to be smaller than or equal to this, we get a maximum value for dx is 4.3 Megameter, uh, millimeters. <laughs> okay, so for the moment we will assume that dx is 4.3 millimeters. Now we can turn our attention to the source waveform. If we're going to test our radar system in the ISM band from 902 to 928 megahertz, we need to make sure the source waveform we use only has spectra over this frequency range. So far we've been assuming a simple square pulse that is only 20 time steps wide. If we want to know what the spectrum is for the square pulse, we need to take the Fourier transform of it. Here is the expression for the Fourier transform for some given time waveform. So this is our time waveform, f of t. If we plug it into this expression, we'll get the spectrum. Using the Fourier transform, we can plot the magnitude of our pulse versus frequency. And we can also calculate and plot the phase uh, of our source versus frequency. Spend a minute and think about how we can use this expression, this Fourier transform, to determine the spectrum of our source waveform. How would you actually implement this on a time waveform that we're going to use in our Maxwell's equations model.